Hey guys, welcome back to Freedom Homestead. Today I am sharing with you how I grew a SCOBY from scratch. And uh, before we get into that video, I want to share with you, today is Friday, which means frugal family food. And one of my favorite mom channels is in the lineup for today. So please check out Jamie Patterson if you are into clean with me videos, cooking videos, grocery hauls, clothing hauls, homeschool, all of those things. You will love her channel. She is a sweet, sweet young lady. And um, really, it's been a pleasure to get getting to know her. And like I said, I love her channel. So be sure to check out Jamie Patterson. And now we're gonna get into the SCOBY video. Hey guys, welcome back to Freedom Homestead. I'm Tangi. Today we are in the kitchen because we are going to make a SCOBY from scratch. Now, if you're wondering what a SCOBY is, I'm not here to give all the scientific details, but SCOBY stands for Symbiotic Culture of Bacteria and Yeast, and it is what is used to ferment tea to make kombucha. Kombucha is a yummy fermented tea that is carbonated because of all of the carbon that is released as the yeast eats away at the sugar. And my family, and I said I wasn't gonna have all the science behind it, look at me being all sciencey. The reason why I wanna start brewing kombucha again is because we are trying to cut back on how much sugar we take in as a family. And we drink a lot of sweet tea, and so I wanna give us an alternative to drinking just water because I'll be honest, I don't love water and I'm not the only one in the family. My daughter is the odd woman out. She likes water. So um, the good news is that even though I don't have a SCOBY and I don't have any friends that have SCOBYs that live nearby, I can make it and so can you at home and you only need a few basic things. So you need black tea, you need sugar, you need filtered water, and you need store-bought kombucha. That's it. So here we go. First thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take this quart size ball jar and we're going to fill it halfway with filtered water. Doesn't have to be precise. After you fill your ball jar with halfway with filtered water, you're gonna drop in three black tea bags. No, it's not organic. Don't get judgy. Mm. And to heat this up, I'm actually just gonna pop this in the microwave. Gonna put it in for three and a half minutes and we'll come right back. Well, it's been three and a half minutes. I don't know if you can see it was bubbling. So we're gonna let it sit for a few minutes, let those tea bags steep. Uh, and then while it's still warm, we're gonna add a third cup of sugar. This sat for a little while. I took the tea bags out. I added a third cup of sugar and I stirred it until it dissolved. And then I put the tea bags back in it. You don't have to do that, but I kind of like mine strong. So uh, now I'm just gonna set it aside and let it completely cool. It's getting close to my bedtime. But I wanted to show you really quick how I'm going to finish off this tea. It has come to room temperature. So we're just gonna take this store-bought kombucha and we're gonna pour all of it into the jar. Including all, oh my, I've filled it way too much. Okay, you see all this floating to the top? That's yeast. And that's going to help make the SCOBY. So I'm gonna cover this with a tea towel and we're gonna let it sit for about two weeks and then we will have a SCOBY. Okay guys, it is day four and today I see some changes. Behold, <gasps> the makings of a SCOBY. Can you see that white? It almost looks like a jellyfish. That is the SCOBY. A mother is being born over here. I need a baby. No. This is so exciting. It definitely has that beautiful kombucha smell. I am so excited. Okay, so it has been eight days since I started this. I'm a little concerned about that. Not sure if that is normal. It just looks like a thin layer of SCOBY with some air bubbles underneath it, but I am going to, uh, I'm gonna send a picture to a friend and see if that's the way it's supposed to look. Okay, so good news. Um, I sent a picture of this to my friend Jennifer, also known as Farmer Mima, and she said that it looked to her like Cam's yeast, which I had not heard of. 
So I did a Google search and sure enough, that's what it looks like. So that makes me happy um, to know that this is something that happens and that it is not a bad thing. So we're just gonna keep letting this SCOBY grow. Um, here's a side view. It's looking good, looking good. Okay friends, today is the two week point. Um, if you see this bald spot, if you remember, that's where that cam's yeast was and I just picked it off. I didn't get it all out, um, but just that one big spot. And you can see that the SCOBY is starting to kind of grow over it. Um, so with it being the two week mark and it looks like the SCOBY is about, I don't know, a fourth of an inch thick. Um, in theory, I can go ahead and start using this to make kombucha, but I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna transfer this into my big jar. I've actually been using my big jar to put <laughs> uh, snacks in, but um, I'll wash this and disinfect it and then pour this in here because that is actually what I brew my kombucha in. And I like for the SCOBY to be as big as the container. Um, so since I like to do, oh, since I like to do a one gallon batch at a time. So um, I think that's what I'll do today is I will um, make a fresh batch of tea. And of course leaving, uh, you want about a cup of starter tea, which this what this is, is the starter tea. Um, I'll reserve a cup of this and that, and then I'll just make a fresh batch of tea and pour it in there and then I'm gonna let it sit for another two weeks and see what happens. Hey guys, it has been a month since I started this SCOBY. It is beautiful, yet I still haven't put it in my big jar, so that's exactly what I'm gonna do today. I just let time get away from me and I've been on a business trip and everything, but let's take a look at it. It looks awesome. Look at that, it's a SCOBY, you guys. Okay, and you can see it's already getting some layers, so it's got some babies in there. Starter tea is nice and kind of orangey colored. I've already washed and disinfected my gallon size uh, jar, which is what this is gonna go in. But first I'm going to make a batch of sweet tea. Again, I'm using the same black tea that I made uh, the first batch with. So this is uh, about a quart of water. I've got uh, seven tea bags, so I'm basically gonna do just like I would make a gallon of sweet tea. So I'm going to heat this up in the microwave for five minutes. After the tea had steeped for a few minutes, I removed the tea bags and I'm going to now add a cup of pure cane sugar and stir until it's dissolved. Once the sugar is dissolved, I add the tea bags back into the tea. You don't have to do this, but I like for my tea to be a little on the strong side. Once the tea is completely cooled, I get the tea bags out. And I noticed when I was taking the tea bags out that some of the tea grounds had gotten out of the bag. So if this happens, you're going to want to strain out your tea. So here in just a moment, I'm going to take my mesh strainer, put it over my gallon size jug, and then I'm gonna line it with a cheesecloth, pour that through just to make sure that no little particles get into my kombucha. After I cleaned up my mess, I poured in filtered water into my tea. You're going to fill your jug almost all the way. You wanna make sure that you leave room for about a cup of your starter tea. Now it's time to add the starter tea and SCOBY, but listen, anytime you're going to touch your SCOBY, you want to make sure that your hands are impeccably clean. Now I'm pouring in about a cup of my starter tea, and I noticed that there were a lot of good bits of yeast down at the bottom, and I wanted to make sure that that also went into the starter tea. That helps to make the kombucha. So you can kind of see I'm swirling it around, and then I pour that uh, back into the jug. I'm giving it a good stir to make sure it's all incorporated, and then I am going to add my SCOBY. Okay, 
so I put the uh, starter tea in, I put the SCOBY in, and the SCOBY sunk all the way to the bottom, which is normal. Sometimes they float, sometimes they stay kind of halfway, and sometimes they sink. So this one sank, and um, over time it will start to float back if it doesn't float to the top, then a new SCOBY will form and that's okay. So I'm going to leave this alone for a few weeks and hopefully in a few weeks uh, we will have a SCOBY the size of this jar. So that's all I'm going to do for this video. I will do an update video uh, in about a month or so and show you how I uh, do a second ferment and bottle it up. One last thing, you want to put your kombucha. Uh, in a dark place. If you don't really have a dark place, then just use a tea towel to cover it. You just want to keep light from uh, from getting in there. So what I do is I'm actually going to use the same exact tea towel that I had the mason jar covered with, the quart size mason jar, and then I'm going to um, cover it like this. And this is also really important because this will draw fruit flies. Um, so what I normally do is I make up a batch of fruit fly, uh, a fruit fly trap, um, which is just a little bit of apple cider vinegar um, and some dish liquid and a little bit of water. And I'm going to put that near my jar. So as the fruit flies are drawn to it, they'll also be drawn to the trap and they will get stuck in it and die. So I've used that before very successfully. Um, but yeah, you just might want to be on the lookout for that. But until then, I've got my rubber band on there. Whatever you use to cover it with, you just want to make sure that it can breathe. So uh, I'm going to get this out of the way. And this is my kind of like my fermenting cubby. Um, anytime I ferment anything, I like to keep it over in this corner because it is dark and it's out of the way. And that's it. I hope you guys enjoy this video. Until next time. Thanks so much for stopping by Freedom Homestead. Here we're about living off the land, being together as a family. We homeschool our two children. We talk to you about our gardening adventures, how we preserve our own food and build our food storage. We live on a tight budget and we share with you our grocery hauls. I will even break out the cleaners and show you how I clean my house. So whether we're sharing with you our life, our love of liberty, or our love for each other, thanks so much for stopping by and please consider subscribing.